One of the uh, af objects that went up today, I don't know whether you've had a chance to look at the Safer Internet site, probably if you're in school, you haven't. Me, it was alright for me, I was delivering, I did the Year 5 lesson and the Year 6 lesson and assembly, all on Safer Internet, so I had the excuse to look in. And we're putting them... Um, Teach me Year 6. No, 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 that's there. That's it. Um, they put up today an e-safety quiz. They called it an IQ test. And the idea is that young people challenge their mums and dads and adults at home to uh, see how good they are at e-safety. Okay? So I had a look at it. And uh, that's the hashtag if you want to check with all the links. All the links for Safer Internet Day are all going to be uh, traceable by the hashtag. But to be honest, just Google it. You're going to find it. On the Safer Internet Centre, the Safer Internet Centre is run by South West Bridge for Learning on behalf of the country, so it's not a, a particularly regional thing. You'll find this thing, so Internet Safety IQ Test. They put it up this morning, I picked it up this morning and I discovered it was a really good lesson start because it's a four page test that covers, or quiz, that covers uh, gaming, mobile use, TV and video downloading and social networking. <coughs> And it was a really good start, and I used it with Year 5 and Year 6, and it kind of just elicited enough discussion to get things going without it getting out of hand. So I'd really advise you to have a look. If you get 120 out of 120 first go without cheating, I should be astonished. Because actually, it's quite tricky, quite tricky, it's quite hard to do. Um, this is the sort of information that I use and we give out, and this it, you can give out down to little ones. I've done nursery sessions with this, and it's the e-safety hand, and it's how to keep safe online. Because lots of parents panic too much and think that there's a massive danger out there. Obviously, everything's out there. If you follow the e-safety hands and you don't give out that information, then you can't be targeted as an individual. You might still see things that you don't like, things that upset you, and things that you feel scared by, but you will not be personally targeted. This is the way to stop the grooming approach. And you can see what's up there. Family name, address, phone number, all that kind of huge thing for that one. Uh, emails, IDs and passwords, including IDs into games, photos of what you look like in your school name. And if pupils never ever disclose that, they will never be at personal danger. Okay? And that's a kind of a, a gap that I think lots of adults in the system don't really appreciate. Um, the next issue that I went on to after I did the Safe for Internet Day quiz was conduct, because conduct is the bit about how you behave online. And it's often the most difficult bit to cover. And it's things like being responsible for your own behaviour. I won't read it all out because uh, you can read some of them for, uh, for yourselves later if you wish to. Um, it's also things about being polite and respectful and not forwarding chain emails or messages. Big problem in primary schools because children get very frightened. So I say, don't be worried. Even if they're unkind and frightening, don't worry. A lot of it is about lessening the risk and lessening the concern. There is a course, if any of you teach secondary, or in secondary schools, we've got Cyber Mentors course running uh, in Raynham, um, in Havering, on the 14th of February, in half term, young people independently nominate themselves for it. To run Cyber Mentors in school costs £750 to £1,500 per school. We've got a course running for free. If you contact Beat Bullying, the children can register there, children and young people, they do it independently. But if you're in secondary school and you want details, see me and I'll give it to you before the end. It's a free opportunity. I don't like reporting, because reporting sounds like, well, okay, you do something about it then, I've told you. And actually that's not what we want <coughs> people to do all the time. It's more about taking action. And a lot of it is peer support, going back to the side of momentous bit. If you saw Panorama last night, absolutely critical. <coughs> Talking to trusted adults, regardless of who that trusted adult is. And also using the non-emergency police number. Unless you're in imminent danger, you don't use 999. Yet we've got schools ringing 999 because somebody's being cyberbullied. It's not appropriate use of time. Uh, if there is an imminent danger, you can use the click seal button or dial 999. But if you don't click seal, immediate report, you can't do it anonymously. It's read the minute you press send. It's not queued up. And it's then acted upon. They get about four a day that they act on immediately and about four a month that lead to serious legal cases. The majority of the cases you hear now come through the click seal button. And for us, in the room here, we often encounter things we oh, I don't know how to do that. Now I've got this Facebook site that's been made up about me, but they've made it like a business page and I can't take it down. We do have a professional centre now. The details are here. You've got an email address and a phone number that operates during the day. 
It's available there for any adults working with children in any context. And if you've got an issue, it's not for yourself or for your children, with cybermen, bullying, flaming, spamming, um, in, uh, you know, in, uh, imposter sites and so on, help, use that centre to help you because they've got direct lines into Facebook and the other social networking sites. If you uh, go onto the safer, uh, UK Safer Internet site, you'll find it there. That's a useful one. And that's me. Oh, I'm done with it. I'm happy safe for internet. Thank you.